You've selected a show from the Podcast Jukebox, a DIY podcast network. It's Will Sean Podcast. The internet cried out for two more blowhards, and they courageously answered that call. Armed with the weapon of wit, each week they're joined by guests to discuss movies, television, pop culture, and anything else that's pissing them off. Take it away, boys. I'm Will Link. And I'm Sean David. And this is Will Sean Podcast. Pumped full of antibiotics and hope. How you doing, Will? Um, so we've been we've been away. We have been away. Uh another mini little break, but we're we're back. Okay. That's uh, all we can promise at this point. Yes. I um I went to the eye doctor. Okay. And as I've said before on the show, the eye doctor is my least favorite doctor. I'm terrified of the eye doctor. Mm. I once punched an eye doctor in the face. Okay. I didn't mean to, but they came at my eyes and I Well, flinched. that's what, what they do. It'd be a problem if you came for your, you know, genitalia. And my eye doctor, she is wonderful. Like So I you really, hit a woman? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh the her whole office, everyone in the office is great. It's better than when I went to the stupid fucking lens crafters which was a nightmare but these people are good people yeah anyway point is i was given an option at the end of this visit because my prescription didn't change yeah so they said well you know you get basically a free pair of frames yeah do you want a backup pair of glasses and we can order your exact because we know you're very attached to these frames (laughs) which i am yeah i'm very attached to these frames or you can get prescription sunglasses. And I thought about this for a long time. Mm. Probably too long. I talked to them for about 20 minutes about this, which I'm sure they love. Yeah. And then I decided to get prescription sunglasses. Okay. So I'm going to have prescription sunglasses. Welcome to my world. The man who hasn't worn glasses. I, I haven't owned a pair of sunglasses since I was a teenager. And my eye doctor has been yelling at me for... Yeah. About two decades now that I need to get sunglasses. Well, you know what my problem is? I don't want to carry around another pair of glasses. So, so I figure. But even in the car, if I'm at like a barbecue or something, I'm going someplace. I know I'm going to be inside and outside. I'm just going to wear my regular glasses. But yeah. if I'm going to be like outside for extended periods, I'll wear the sunglasses. Or while you're driving, I'll figure it out. While I'm driving, I'll figure it out. But now I'm so terrified. I've worn glasses for ten years. Nothing's ever gone wrong with my glasses. Yeah. I'm so terrified that now my glasses are going to break, and I could have used that spare so pair. So when I was traveling in Israel and I was 15 years old, I left my glasses on the bus and had to wear my prescription sunglasses for three days till they got it back to me. And there's nothing better than running around at night with sunglasses on, just desperately trying to see everything. So what's going on in the world of Wilshon Podcast? Well, as we mentioned, we're back from our little mini vacation. So I hope you guys all had a wonderful late spring. Um, we want to remind you that we are now part of the Podcast Jukebox Network, which is, as I am told... What are you told, Sean? I am told that the Podcast Jukebox is a DIY network with a variety of shows that feature alternative lifestyles, perspectives on sexuality and gender, theology, and pop culture. We're the pop culture. We are. So I'd like to mention some of the other fine shows that are part of our, uh, you know, our podcast brothers in arms. There is the OG Off the Cuffs. Uh, parking lot radio, hashtag proud to be kinky, and drinks with God. So I recommend that you subscribe and listen to all these fine offerings. Right? I gotta give this drinks with God. Yeah. And sh- uh, listen, because I, I, if I had drinks with God, I'd have some things to you, say. To you him. do realize it's not going to be Alanis Morissette from Dogma, right? That's what I'm hoping. Okay. It is. I'm still holding out hope for no, that. No, but seriously, we want to give a lot of thanks to uh, all the work they're doing there to helping, you know, to uh, pull this together. Uh, they're doing the, the, the Lord's work. I'm sure they would appreciate that. So please make sure if any of these sound interesting, subscribe, check them out. And in the coming months, we're, uh, I'm sure, going to be doing some synergy. Yeah, I got to – I keep saying this. I got to reach out to some of those folks. Uh, who's our sponsor this week? Mother Nature. When you forget your place in the universe, she's always there to remind you who's in charge. Oh, what what ha- what happened? Well, um, I went on a trip to Alaska, uh, the 49th state, and stupidly I decided to go outdoors. It only took about two hours for me to contract some terrible skin infection. Never go outdoors; you'll yeah. get a skin infection. Yeah, that's this why, is what I get. I've, that's why I've never. My skin has not seen sunlight in uh, in, in the past. No, it wasn't years. that. It was like stagnant glacier water. On the show today, 
Wonder Woman came out a while ago, but yeah. we had, it, 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 while we were away, it became a cultural phenomenon, so how could we not discuss it? I mean, we could not. <laughs> um, I'm really good at suspending my disbelief, but there is one film franchise I cannot suspend my disbelief with. Female Ghostbusters? We will discuss. No. No. <laughs> Oh, Not good. In the same glad episode to, as Wonder Woman. Glad you had to go on the record for that one. Ah. And uh, Sony, a studio we've talked many times about on this podcast, particularly when they were hacked. Yeah. Well, guess what? They got some bigger problems now. Me, I'm going to tell it like it is to them. <laughs> we will discuss. But female first, Ghostbusters. <laughs> we. Oh my God! It was a Sony movie. That was. I liked the female Ghostbusters movie, and I'm not just saying that. Oh, okay. <laughs> On the show today, we are very excited to have with us. She is a terrific actress and an amazing singer, Maria Howe. It is so good to be here, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. I'm controlling my phlegm. Hold on. <clears throat> These guys, wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. I, 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 um, we met um, at a... Ter- well, I think we had met before this, but we... Mm-hmm. We reconnected. A, I saw you perform in a terrific storytelling show, Tales of oh, Tinseltown. Wonderful experience. It was frightening and freeing at the same time. And you did, of course, a great piece about, uh, <laughs> you know, well, it's all of, all the pieces there are about this town and working oh, in this the town. The town of Tinsel? Yep. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> and it was yeah. all about you, like, your comings and goings from mm-hmm. Los Angeles. Yes, yes. Uh, and the second you did that story, I'm like, oh, we got to get her on the show. Aww. We got to talk to her about thank this. Thank you. Thank you. It was real. <laughs> and you also you also sang a little bit mm-hmm. at that show, too. And I said, oh, well, that's something to hear, too. Wow. So I did. I don't remember it. I have amnesia. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. It made an impression. <laughs> um, but before we get into all of that... Mm-hmm. We always like to start with the guest's origin story. Okay. Where are you from originally? I am from a place called Gastonia, North Carolina. Okay. It's near Charlotte, North Carolina on the East Coast. And it's at the Piedmont. It's at the bottom of the, the, the mountains. And it's a wonderful place to be from. Very small town. Oh, so really mm-hmm. like, so, so in a small town, and maybe this is just because I've always lived in New York and Los Angeles, so I don't mean to be like, sound like yeah, some, yeah, yeah. Continue. Yeah, 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 some yeah. city elitist <laughs> or something. But, but so when you're in a small town, I mean, obviously people sing everywhere, but did you have like a lot of exposure to like the arts and stuff like that? You know, I think it just depends on the small town because yeah. <laughs> um, some small towns have a very rich cultural an artistic community. Um, Mine was kind of, I think it was kind of in between, but we had a lot of good people come out of my hometown. Not just North Carolina, but my hometown. James Worthy played for the Lakers. Yes, he did. From my hometown. Um, A lot of people may not know Donald Lawrence is a a Grammy award-winning gospel uh, artist. Came from my high school. Um, Sleepy Floyd, who played for Georgetown. Yeah, so I've got quite a few. I mean, there are are some others that came from my hometown. So yeah, but, but... a lot of music. You had we had churches. Yeah, that's what we grew up doing: singing in church in high school and things like that. So, I had great teachers. So, was that your first exposure to know that, like, oh, I have this ability to sing and I enjoy doing this? Was no, it in the church? No. Oh, okay. There you go. No one. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because when I was six years old, there was a mirror experience for me. I used to talk in the mirror. And uh, I remember standing there and it's like, I just knew what I was going to do when I grew up. Then when I got to church um, and they pushed me out to sing and they made me a lead singer, that's when I kind of got that, that notion of, oh, okay. And then the very first time I heard someone shouting on a song that I was singing, I was like, oh my God, it terrified me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I came from the kind of Baptist church. It yeah. was like almost like very sedate. Okay. okay. You got an amen. That was a good Sunday. <laughs> so uh, everyone sat very quiet. Yeah, and just... yeah. And so I was a little like, "Ooh, what's what's going on here?" Yeah. And and then I realized, "Oh, maybe that's something you're giving." You know. So that's that's where I started understanding the purpose and the calling. And then high school and college and on and on. So, so did you study performing arts then? In, in... I did not. I okay. have a degree in biology and a minor in chemistry. Oh, okay. 
That goes together. Well, well like I, peanut butter and jelly. So, <laughs> so naturally you went into acting. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it, the bottom line is I'm the oldest of six kids. So you grow up in a small town. The mentality yeah. is go to school, help the others through right. school. So I wanted to do the practical thing. But the singing and the acting was always there. But did you ever, did you, did you have your academic career and then on the side you would be involved in clubs? Absolutely. Or you, okay. Well, so. no, they didn't let me join a band until I graduated from college. Okay. Because they were like, you need to have something Solid, and okay. so I, I did that. I, I pleased my parents. I mean, you know, I, I, I had an affinity for. Uh, I'm the eldest. I know how it science. is. <laughs> you understand. Yeah. I, I love science and, and biology and things of that nature. But you know, I always lived this dual life. So mm. yeah. Oh, well, it's, it's you had a. Uh, uh, well, you also majored in science and biology, right? Oh, I was terrible at science. chemistry and biology. And my mother's a science teacher. Wow. Yeah. And I was so naturally, I was bad at I was bad at math and science. I was great at like history and English. Mm, like mm-hmm, you know, that was mm-hmm. those were my things. Yeah. I played play your strengths, but you had multiple yeah. strengths. Yeah, you had the art and the science. Yeah, Not I a lot of people it. have that. I loved it, and I love being smart. I just love that. I mean, I graduated one of three um, black graduates from my high school, honor grad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was great. So, what was the? Um, so, you know, you're performing and stuff like that. So you must enjoy, like, you know. I mean, no, I said, what was, the f- what was, like, the first role you had as an actor? Like, what was... Uh, the Color Purple. Uh, I, I saw uh, look, that look, under the... The movie. Yes. For, for a long time, I could say, oh, The Color Purple, but now I have to distinguish between yeah. the movie and the musical. Now, that's yeah. quite... So the, how did that all come together? <laughs> yeah, that's quite the first movie yeah. first role to be in it's like it you know what it was wrong, what what i'm not going to say what was wrong with it but what crippled me to a certain degree and not even know i was crippled is that i started off at a high level yeah you're starting off and Steven Spielberg is directing you and Quincy Jones is talking to you and you, you got all these folks and I'm going and, and I don't know if you know who Gordon Parks is mm-hmm. uh, I mean but he was the he was the photographer there and I was like um yeah this is the way everything's going to be yeah well, yeah, when I've worked with Spielberg. I, yeah, it you know it's Stephen and I. You know yeah. Stevie, darling. Yeah. But you know, and then the second project I worked on was with George Lucas. Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Yeah, so oh. it was kind of like my first two hits out the box. I was like, oh yeah, I'm good. This is the way it goes. So I'm a huge Young Indiana Jones Chronicles oh, fan. My. I love that show. I wish God. they would bring it back. It's it it's was in the a, perfect it's in foreign blend. countries. <laughs> it's hard to find. It's yeah. only on VHS. It's a whole mess. It's yeah. that perfect blend of. Um, history and adventure Love and it always show. bothered me i always liked the younger version i didn't care for the teenager with his uh-huh. romantic entanglement uh-huh. so every week would be like a two part are you familiar with this no i used to watch it okay but i was not big on the little kid oh, i yeah. liked because it was close to i like the age, sean like patrick uh, flannery, flannery. Sean, yeah, yeah. yeah. i no, liked him see the yeah. kid was more my age i'm like hey he's like with sigmund freud and this is a weird conversation I think that was also really old indie yeah old yeah indie, who would like, do stuff like, like trying to get like a cat out of a tree <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, um, that so, show needs yeah so clearly sean's that, a Disney. big fan of that show who, what, what who did you play on that show what did i you played do? a character named goldie um who was i was a fictitious character but the two characters i was playing against um, were real historical yeah. care, uh, figures, um, Louis Armstrong and King Oliver. Okay. And they were showing the relationship with how King Oliver was Louis Armstrong's, you know, mentor. Yeah. And here I come, you got to have an ingenue. Yeah. That came out of the church. Yeah. So I sang in the church, and then I was also singing in the nightclub. So you know, which is you know kind of normal. So um, yeah, that was, and that's where I met. I worked with Keith David. Oh, Coming Keith David's great. He played King Oliver. There I am. I'm doing all this, yeah. and I'm thinking that's the way it's supposed to be. So, oh, yeah. man. I mean, you like, I mean, right from the gate. So, okay, mm-hmm. we, let's take us another step back, though, because we got all excited about young Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, but we the color the level purple. Of the room. Yeah. <laughs> Steven Spielberg. So how did you get that part? Oh, this is so interesting. Um, I'll, I'll make this as quick as possible, because I've told it for 32 years now. Um I was auditioning for something at a cattle call. Don't know what that part was. Now, was this in North Carolina? Or was North this? Carolina. Okay. In North Carolina. Don't know what the part was. And they were like, oh, good. You know, thank you. Bye. I'm yeah. like, uh, what? Yeah. I've been waiting like uh, eight hours over here in this big auditorium. 5,000 people, it seemed. Um, when everybody started dispersing, I sheepishly went up to the casting director and I said, oh, would you keep my photo on file? Yeah. yeah. And she says, oh, I said, oh, and by the way, I sing too. And that's how that happened. She says, oh, what do you know? I cut my hand to her ear, saying, God bless the child. Yeah. 
It was the only song I felt comfortable singing by without Lisa a Simpson. piano. Right, written by the Simpsons. <laughs> right, right. That version. Yes, the original version. Yeah. Right. Oh Lord, please don't believe that. But anyway, so after I sang the song, she says, "Oh, well, do you need any gospel?" I said, "Oh, okay." She said, "Well, go work work something out." I came back. Everybody had gone by then. Yeah. Didn't even. I was so green. I didn't know this was a screen test. They whisked me up on stage. Yeah. I sang something a cappella by myself because at first they were taking us in groups of like eight to ten people. Yeah. That was it. And I got a call the next day, said, hey, I want you to be part of the choir. I'm like, oh, there's a choir in this? I didn't even know what a color purple was. Oh, wow. I didn't even know what it was yet. I just heard of it. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. So um, did that and then uh, became part of the choir. The next thing you know, they said, oh, well, we got to have a soloist. And they made me the soloist. Wow. Yeah. And there were three songs in it. Yeah. But the other two songs you just hear in the, in the soundtrack, mine was the only visual one. And I read the book on set. Okay. Nice. I had to catch up. I had to play you, catch up. No, you said you were uh, were green. You didn't even know. Was it that probably benefited you though? Because uh, you yeah. didn't know to be like right. and, terrified. Well, I found out 24 <laughs> years later. Can you believe that? That the person who actually um, chose me for that part was Quincy Jones' right hand man. He actually lives here in L.A. Um, and we through Facebook, believe it or not, kind of reconnected some kind of way. He told me the story that that they went against the specs. The casting was, uh, they, they wanted a, an older, heavyset black woman. As you can see, I'm yeah, not, not you. that. No. Yeah. I might be black, but I'm not like that. So, you know, it was just kind of interesting that he said, no, I want to choose something different. I want to go with what my mom looked like on the choir. Because evidently his mom sang on the choir. And so, thank goodness, he was the... And did you have like a, I mean, did you... Like, did you have a lot of interacting with Spielberg or anybody? Oh, darling, Stevie, what? <laughs> yes. I, there is a photo that I have not gotten my hands on, and I wish I had it, where Quincy was on this side, Steven's on this side, and they were both kissing me. And oh, my I don't, God. Yeah. And I don't, have a, I don't have that in my possession. I'm just sick over it. Yeah. But, yeah. This has got to be, we got to get you that photo. You got to get, all right, if anybody <laughs> knows Steven's cell phone number and he answers the cell phone. Tweet it at us. DM get, us. Get it, yeah. get it to me. And get it to way, me. by the way, if any <laughs> listeners know Steven Spielberg's cell phone and have never given it to us, you know. Shame on you. Yeah, exactly. A- enemy of the podcast. Yeah, future enemy of the podcast. Right, right. Um, so, yeah. Wow. And it, Quincy, I mean, that's unbelievable. So then you do Young Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. You said uh, uh, Lucas. You're working with Keith David, who's an oh, actor I love. We're still friends to this day. He's my voiceover mentor. Oh, well, he's yeah. got Come on, really? the voice, you know. And also, I'm a big uh, John Carpenter fan, and he's mm. so great in The mm-hmm. Thing, and in They Live, like all those movies. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, I, I like grew up watching those movies, wow. you know. Wow. Yeah. So Because Will fan was raised by very poor parents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I no, that's where a poor, poor parent that there was a, a lot of over, lack of oversight in what you were allowed to see at one I age. think my father <laughs> understood what good cinema was. Yeah. Yes, yes, um, yes. That's what you. I was trying to say. So you, so you, so yeah. now you're do. I mean, you you pop up on a lot of stuff. It seems like you work on a lot of different shows mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Uh, see, uh, uh, you've been on uh, Vampire Diaries, Devious Maids, Revolution. Have you done? Mm-hmm. A, you're. you're I'm, I was looking at your whole filmography, mm-hmm. and there's, there's a lot to, to, to I dive ca- into. I, I carry guns these days. Oh, yeah, like in the like in a detective oh. or a, a lieutenant. I'm carrying guns yeah. these days. I don't know what that's about. But. Did they? Um, did you have to do like some training with that? Do they have? Do they, have been... do they teach you how to like properly hold it? And like, no, something? they just say, "Ain't no bullets in this gun." <laughs> Boom, yo. No, no, just seriously. You know, you um, gotta sing like you know I can sing. This you know? is what I always do. <laughs> I'm always like trying to get email addresses on set so I can invite them to my gigs, right? <laughs> if only they brought back Cop Rock. If they brought back that show, you'd be perfect for that then. Yeah, but I'm, I'm really happy to be doing a lot of roles that, that don't call for singing. Because it's really interesting, too. On the East Coast, it's like people know me as a singer right. first. On the West Coast, they know me as an actor first. So it's kind of interesting. I'm like, where do I go to be known as both? I don't know. Hmm. So I don't know. St. Louis. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> right, right. Now, I guess one of the things that brought you into our circle here, besides me seeing you at a terrific show, mm-hmm. was uh, you were in Catching Fire mm-hmm. with yeah. a friend of the podcast, oh, yeah. Megan Hayes. Oh, yeah. I know who are you on Catching Fire, which is by far the best of the Hunger Game movies. I agree. And yeah, I'm not just yeah, saying no, that. No, I'm not either. It's, it's, yeah. I, I totally agree. And I, I've seen three of them. So, well. Three out of the four. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Megan and I, Megan um, 
uh, <laughs> it's uh, such good. We have so many good stories. I played Cedar, and uh, which was really really fun because I had a chance to work in scenes with Woody Harrelson, who is one of my favorites. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was. It yeah, was a, how was how, how was he? Did he like? Uh, he seems like he seems just like a. a Fun guy. He is so laid back. Yeah. Oh, is he now? Oh, my <laughs> I wonder God. why. I wonder why he's so laid he's back. He's so laid back. Well, he said he quit. <laughs> huh? He said he quit smoking. It did Recently. Really? Like in the last year. Okay. Or yeah. just for like a couple days? Okay. No, I don't know. Yeah, it's called sleeping. I don't know. That's, that's <laughs> okay. what he said. So. I, all I know is he's one cool dude. I like him. <laughs> I like him. And... Mm-hmm. I think most recently people might recognize you from another Oscar nominated. You've been in multiple Oscar nominated, Best Picture nominated. You can give me one films. word, I don't care. <laughs> um, I'm good. I'm good with that. That's good. Let me tell you what. Here's the pitch to everyone out there you want your film to get nominated for Best Picture. Okay. Yeah. Can we go there? Put Maria in it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the way to go. Listen, uh, everybody out there. Yeah. But you were in. <laughs> She's like the Robert Ori of, uh, of actors. <laughs> you, you were in. Uh, Hidden figures, mm-hmm. and not only were you in it, you like you were all over the trail. Like you were in the trail. Like I, I remember your like you're in the opening of that movie. You was, deliver key lines. What's crazy about it? Megan Hayes, friends of the podcast, uh, called me. She says, "Oh my god, oh my god, do you realize you're in the SAG uh, Awards trailer?" I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I think I was on a gig somewhere. I don't yeah. even remember. I think I was actually singing somewhere, and I was like, "Are you serious?" So that was kind of an honor. I like you. You play the teacher mm-hmm. who sends like Catherine mm-hmm. out. Like you're the get out of West Virginia. <laughs> I'm like telling her mom and dad, "You got to get up out of here." And, and that was the letter, you know. The director also Valley Boy from Van Nuys. Oh, he is wonderful. Yeah. He, Ted, uh, oh, Ted Melfi. Ted Melfi. Yeah. One of the best uh, uh, directors I've ever worked with. Yeah. Now yeah. your your scene is when Catherine's young. Mm-hmm. Did you get to at all through anything get to, to spend time with any of the other like older actresses with Octavia? So that, yeah, a little bit with her. Yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, and it's interesting. Years ago, I guess about six, seven years ago, something like that. Octavia and I were in, I forgot what state that was in. I want to say it was in Alabama somewhere. I was doing, we were doing a television show. She had just done her segment, walked out. I think I was in another room talking to somebody in the green room, came out. She had just left, so I missed her. We've been missing each other. But we got a chance to, um, to catch up and, and introduce ourselves on set. So it nice. was good. Yeah, it was real good. Uh, now... It occurs to me that I skipped a lot of questions I normally ask because we're so excited about so many things you've been involved in. But, like, at what... So, obviously, you do Color Purple and stuff like that. At what point did you leave North Carolina? At what point did you, like, say, I got to go to L.A. or... or That's an interesting story uh, because when I f- did the Color Purple, I literally was like, oh, great, now I can go sing for a living. Okay. Uh, because I was at the rap party, the band that was performing, someone said, "Oh, since you're the choir solos, why don't you go sing a song with the band?" And I was like, "Cool." Yeah. So I sang a song with the band. Next day, I get a call, and they were like, "We want you to join our band." But they were they were in North Carolina, uh, so everything was like kind of in close pl- proximity. Okay. So I was excited. I joined the band. Boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, I'm singing more than I am acting. Okay. Had the best singing gig in the whole wide world. It was the best place in Charlotte, North Carolina, Jonathan's Jazz Cellar. People still remember it. So um, I was there for a number of years. Then I moved to New York because I'm an East Coast mindset, yeah. I thought. There you go. You know? Um, but I said, let me give L.A. an opportunity uh, because the producers from Young Indiana Jones Chronicles had set up all these meetings for me. I came out to L.A. and in three days I'm like, I think I'm going to New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, so literally in three days. and um, But not before I went up to Marin County and visited the Skywalker yeah. Ranch. Well, you have you know, to. Yeah. And had lunch with George Lucas. I'm sorry, am I bragging? Uh, you know okay. what? You're, Listen, you're if maybe... I had a nickel for every time I had lunch with George Lucas, I'd have nothing. <laughs> am I bragging? Or what? <laughs> yeah. Great, great yeah. opportunity. And so hey, That's why we have you on. Why, we, want, <laughs> we encourage the name dropping on this podcast. <laughs> so I went to New York, and I was there, and the only thing about it was I was... <laughs> Out of New York working to earn money to be able to afford to live in New York, I'm like, something's wrong with this equation, don't like it. Um, Went back to North Carolina because I knew work was automatically there, and I worked with Maya Angelou in a play playing her daughter. Oh, Oh, wow. Another, another, I'm sorry. Am I name another, dropping? I was about to say. Oh my god! <laughs> Are you know that heart, but yeah. okay. So Just a, my, yeah. me and Maya. <laughs> yeah, and she that was a wonderful experience. So things went on went on went on and then I happened to have an opportunity to move to Japan so I lived in Japan for six years singing oh wow mm-hmm. 
So uh, how yeah. was how was what was that like? What was the best? Where were you singing in, in Japan? I was I was married to a military person, and we lived in Okinawa. Okay. And then I uh, was touring all around the country: Sapporo, Hiroshima, Osaka, everywhere. Awesome. In, yeah, Tokyo. So then, let me ask you this: because I'm always like, you know, you don't you don't get a lot of like Japanese singers coming here and touring right. America, but I guess. As a singer, like an English language singer, is it was also because it was jazz music. That- I did everything. Okay. I mean, well, let's say everything from like jazz slash R and B slash pop, mostly. Okay. You know, it was a it was a good mix. Yeah, but I but assume it, they, I they consider- absorb all culture more exactly. than we absorb their. Oh I guess God. that's what it is because yes. I always find it interesting because you always see like musicians will go perform everywhere, and I'm like. They don't and we know steal their kung there. we steal their kung fu and martial arts, you know. Yeah, so that's cultural true. exchange. We, so. Yeah, okay. We cannot sleep on that culture because they know music, yeah. and they did it very, very well. Yeah, uh, and they have a where I was living had a very, very thick uh, Filipino community too. So and oh my God. yeah, but are they like? Oh, man. Were they, are they, well, obviously you were touring there, so they, <laughs> they must have been into it. But I mean, yeah. so are they like really big into then like American music and stuff like that? I mean, it was at the point where I was like, okay, I got to learn this language. I was going to ask. Oh, it. yeah, I know a little bit of it. I mean, I could get around in the taxis and yeah. give directions and all this kind of stuff on the trains. I, I was, I got along very well. You know, six years you should. Um, but, I was always like, I want to speak Japanese. I want to speak Okinawa. Yeah. And they were like, no, 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 Maria-san. No, no, no. You speak English. We want Because that was exotic to them. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Mm, well, what I've heard also from friends of mine that have gone to Japan is that they don't speak English very well. And that it's a little more challenging than they thought. They, A lot of my friends went to Japan thinking they would have an easier time with English mm. to get there. Including my parents when they were there. And they said, no, a lot of people don't really speak English. It's, mm-hmm. it's a little difficult. Because, it, yeah, it's, they don't have the... Um, the L's yeah. in their, their language. Oh, uh, you know what? I, I, I wish we had... Occasionally, it's funny, like a uh, a big, like... There'll be, like, one hit, like, from some, like, like Russian a, singer or German singer. Gingham sing. style. Yeah. Or, yeah, the, I mean, right, it's right. weird that you'll get, like, sometimes but it never, like, breaks out for... I want someone torn or... I go see them. Why yeah. not? You, you know, you're a man of the world. I, I, a worldly I, individual. I think Got a passport. Are, I think there's just a couple of them that that have broken the barriers here in the United States, and that's Hiroshima, the group, the jazz group. Okay. Oh, okay. Or or uh, there's another one. God, I can't think of the name of it, but they did music to the soundtrack of uh, of uh, Prince. The something. Oh God, what was the name of that? Prince movie? of Tides. No, <laughs> not that one. The Swan Princess. Something oh. like that. It was like some of those animations. Oh, okay. you'll, you'll hear Japanese artists in those animations soundtracking. Well, were you performing with other Americans, or were you performing with like Japanese bands? Both. Okay. But my main band, I recorded two CDs there, and that was with. Um, actually, I came back to the states to record them, but I released them there, and um, I worked on the military bases and I worked in the community. They were crazy for your copy of Live in Burbank <laughs> over there. <laughs> So, it was great, though. I won't lie. It was great. So um, <laughs> you you just told us that you've been traveling a lot lately, yeah. a lot of singing gigs yeah. and stuff like that. So where have you been recently? A lot of the East Coast, Southeastern region, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Are these, like, do you have, um, do, are a lot of this stuff, stuff that, like, kind of comes up, like, and you're, like, you, 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 like, go, like, oh, they want you in this gig, or, like, they... Is there, is there a lot of last minute traveling for you with this? No, a lot of it's like I'm a recurring. Say for example, there's a jazz series. I go back every year. This is my seventh year going back to a particular museum. Okay. Um, there are different things like that. Oh, nice. There are several cities that are like you know Jacksonville Jazz Festival. I did that two years in a row. Okay. Now yeah. you say that you're more known on the East Coast as a singer, mm-hmm. West Coast as an actress. Mm-hmm. But do you do a lot of singing gigs out here? I have begun to do singing gigs out here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what he's asking yeah. is, where can we see you before? You can come down to the Los Angeles Athletic Club, which is in DTLA. Mm-hmm. Um, on 7th and uh, Olive. Mm-hmm. I sing there two times a month on okay. Thursdays. Yeah. Nice. Do we need to be a member yeah. of the Los Angeles Athletic Club? Not on Thursdays. Not okay. for the jazz salon. Mm-mm. Okay. Uh, and you know what? So we have a, we're having a jazz musician on in about a month. Okay. Who's that? Uh, this guy, Eric Reed. I love Eric. Oh, you know him. Oh, yeah. Eric. Oh, there you go. Eric's, Eric's the truth. We're having him on. Eric's, oh, he's awesome. And He's uh, a southern boy, too. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to yeah. talking to him because we know. So this is this is. Uh, I think we have to jam. listen to a little more jazz musical. I think oh we're gonna God, have to. Awesome. We're gonna have to throw ourselves into some yeah. jazz. But I'm also gonna be doing some other things here creatively in LA. That um, the concept is duets. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's gonna be kind of cool. Duet, nice. duo acts. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you do you know who you're duetting with? Yeah, it's a piano player named Xavier Gordon. Okay. Um, got another uh, singer whose name is Royce. He like works a with the guitar. Name, sorry, Xavier Roy- Gordon. Xavier Gordon. Like a- I am. A- yeah. It and, does yeah. sound like yeah. it's like yeah. somebody's alter ego. Yeah. It's like <laughs> the X. <ex>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've got some things, and and want to incorporate Megan and and Oscar and some other folks. Are you going to be doing more storytelling? Because you did a very would, good job at that I storytelling show. I would like show. to. Yeah. I love supporting that. Oscar that community. plays a mean banjo. Does is he really? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, they call me gullible. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. But no, that, that, that's great. you definitely should. Yeah. Um, so where can the people find out everything about you, about upcoming shows, about where can they go? They can go to MariaHowell.com. There you go. That's simple Duh. enough. MariaHowell.com. That's and like Maria, like West Side Story, Howell, like Thurston Howell III. Dot okay. com. Perfect. And if you are a good listener of the podcast, you have already been there. You're already planning <laughs> on going to see her because we will have a link to it on our Facebook page. So, some would say, with all you do, that you Don't. are a Wonder Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Um, unfortunately for you, mm-hmm. you have been traveling so much, you're the one person <laughs> in America who has not seen Wonder Woman yet. That, that that means nothing. I can still discuss it. <laughs> but are you excited? I mean, we're not going to get too spoiler really. Spo- we're not going to spoil too much. I feel yet. like I actually have seen the movie. I have seen so many trailers and studied that. I mean, it's a wonderful. And I'm really proud of that movie. I really am. For well, a I was lot gonna, of reasons. Yeah. I mean, that, well, that's the thing. It, it's Wonder Woman was always going to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. But I think it's become such a cultural big deal because it's. And I don't want to like. Go, Will. What am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Sure. That it's I don't know, but you... Embraced, well, it, it's been embraced as almost like now an even more iconic feminist moment yeah. of having this film. But don't you think that's because of the timing of it? Yeah. Well, I, I actually think 10 years ago, yeah, it, it wouldn't not. have yeah. hit as hard. Well, it would have hit like Elektra did. No, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that because it still might have been a really good movie okay. 10 years ago but I think because we live now in the age of, mm-hmm. of social media yeah. and I think that people are more culturally <laughs> aware uh, I think issues uh, and there feminist you go. issues I mean, we've are had, bigger we've had a, a woman running for president we've got movies like Hidden Figures out so mm-hmm. yeah people are on the bandwagon to, for the women's empowerment movement again also I think the worry was because this was DC they mm-hmm. didn't have any goodwill coming into this thing. They mm-hmm. had the Superman movie. They had... The two, yeah, it was yeah. basically the two Superman movies it, and then... Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Which were about as macho and brooding as you can get. So everyone was worried about the Wonder Woman film. And I think mm-hmm. just the fact that it's... You know, take all the other baggage out of the equation. The fact that it's a good movie. It really legitimately is. good it's movie. well done. Um, helps, you know. And... and just trying to separate out everything else that's been attached to the movie because, you know, white male here, let me let me reclaim this or myself. Well, and, the, and, the chemis- and the chemistry with the two main characters it's, is, is yeah. stellar. I mean, they, they cast that well, I think. Oh, she's amazing, she, yeah. She, okay, Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. That's what I said. And you said G- Gadot. <laughs> I didn't say Gadot. I sp- go back and listen to the tape. All right, I hold on. Let me go back and listen to the tape right now. I was now. specifically <laughs> conscious, but I'm I'm not hitting the T hard. That's you got to hit the T hard. Do yeah, I have Gadot. to hit the T? Yeah, I because I said Gal Gadot, which hit it harder. sounds so exotic. I know. Well, anyway, yeah, like let me tell you what. <laughs> she is so good in this film. Yeah. And the other thing about it is, I knew she would be badass. I knew she would mm-hmm. be good at playing the she's badass straight parts. Straight that, yeah. But she's really good with all this fish out of water comedy she has to do in the film mm. as well. And, you know, she's so charming. I think one of the things about this movie that makes it work and makes her performance work, because it could have easily been felt cheesy mm-hmm. because her character's so earnest and sometimes right. in like the wrong hand. Daryl Hannah and Splash. Well, and sometimes <laughs> in the wrong hand, earnestness feels, you know, it's, it's not that vernish. great. You know, but... Much like, I would say, Christopher Reeve's Superman. Mm-hmm. 
I would compare her, I would hold her in that mm. category mm. because she's pulling off an earnestness and making it feel real. Like when she that talks about how wanting to save the world, you believe she wants to save the world. Like it feels real and honest. And she's a fucking movie star. Hmm. Like she's a, arrived you- as a, a terrific movie star. And okay, I'll add to the mix. She's pretty easy on the eyes. Yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> Did you see her interview about how she auditioned for this movie? Uh, no. So that's what's interesting. And that right there tells the whole story of what you're saying. Because when she auditioned, she didn't know what she was audi- auditioning for. And then they were like, okay, so call you back. She's yeah. wait, wait, waited two weeks. And then they said, have you ever heard of Wonder Woman? And she's like, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. She, the way her enthusiasm and the way yeah. her, her uh, sincerity was... She was total. I mean, she's totally and, humble, and that's the character. Exactly. So it was something yeah. that came natural. So that's why I said the chemistry was really, really good, and the way she she's got a do- daughter, a four or five year old daughter, and uh, the way that she deals with being a mommy. Yeah. You know, she's got some natural stuff with her that made this movie work. I well, think. so she, she was, was she was pregnant for all the reshoots, and they had oh. to she had to wear a green screen. Oh my god! They, they cut out her costume, and then they had a green mesh over her huh, stomach because she was pregnant. And then they CGI'd out her bump and put in her stomach for all the reshoots. Can you CGI me? Yeah. <laughs> I like that idea. Yeah. That's a new diet plan. That's cool. Yeah, it was either, exactly. I mean, it was either that or have Wonder Woman run out of No Man's Land carrying a box. <laughs> you know? Right. Okay. Sitting, big, big wide Wonder sword. Woman, she spends the whole finale sitting behind but a desk. Isn't another reason... <laughs> I've saved the words. I've I've saved, uh, bring me a coffee. <laughs> is another reason this film works is that also it's got terrific director Patty Jenkins oh, yeah. and it's fresh blood. It's not mm. like from the same Zack Snyder or these other DC films. It's somebody new. It's a new voice in this and I just hope that DC and Wonder Bros they allow these other people like I know James Wan's doing the Aqua, Aquaman yeah. and like he's somebody a little different yeah but he did all the Fast and the Furious movies so but he's already no no that's a different uh, James Wan did one of the Fast and no, Furious no you're thinking of Justin Lin aren't you didn't James Wan do one of them I don't think so he does like the Insidious like uh, yeah continue okay I think it's either way but it's either way it's not it, it's a little outside of here's the one thing about Wonder Woman that feels a little familiar the final mm-hmm. battle mm-hmm. and it turns out it's the same second unit director as man of steel uh batman versus superman and that's do the you, one part that feels kind of familiar do you the, think they did that on purpose just to I, bring it home yeah i think to keep the same but i mean i like that patty jenkins throughout most of this movie mm-hmm. gives us something completely different now see now another thing too you made a good point about we were talking about the women's move i'll call it a women's movement right now um but there's going to be another as a spinoff of i think it's called silver and black are you familiar with the female director gina prince bythewood no okay she and her husband used to write for a different world next thing you know she's directed she did love and basketball she did yeah. all these oh, other love movies. and yeah. basketball that's a great yeah. film she directed that she's going to be directing the first african-american female to direct the largest budget action film Oh, nice. Coming out in 20, 2018. Who's, who's in it? Her name is Gina. No, no. Who's, who's Do you know um, who the cast I, I, is? I forgot. No, I don't know who all the cast is. And uh, she works a lot with Sanaa Lathan, but I can't remember who's going to well, be Well, Love and cast. Basketball was cast. a terrific film. Mm-hmm. He directed Furious 7. Okay. Yeah. But he directed a lot of like... L- yeah, but he started with like Saw and Conjuring and stuff. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, so... Okay. So, so all, these female directors, <laughs> all these female directors behind the scenes also. I get, And someone had made a comment not too long ago about how... I, it was matter of fact, it was a, a, a the guy who got... Oh, I can't remember his name that fast. Talking about how female directors put a different kind of touch to movies these mm. days. A, a new sensitivity, well, well, which is very you, fresh. If you have, you know, as as Sean pointed out, we're two straight white men. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you need to have diverse voices yeah. in yeah. filmmaking to keep Period. things fresh, to keep I things agree. interesting. I agree. There's... there's there's an, there's room for everyone's voice, and we need to get all of them out there. Well, the I original agree. director for Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman was going to be Michelle McLaren, who's one of the best, if not the best, television director working mm. today. Yeah, she did some, so many great episodes of Breaking Bad, Game of Thrones. Oh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, say, but she go. walked away from the project. That's when they brought in Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins, who hasn't made a feature film since Monster, which won Charlize the Academy Award, and has just been like stuck doing TV. Not that it's, you know, but... 
just Hollywood didn't give her a chance to make another movie, and she's been doing TV for the last 10 years mm-hmm. until this came to her plate. And uh, good job, Warner Brothers, for not locking her up for a sequel. That's going to cost you a pretty penny. Oh, yeah, because they have to let her direct this thing. It's It would be too yeah. bad PR, PR not to. Oh, and I would love Charlie Sarn to be the second one, too. Mm-hmm. All I got to say yeah. is, can we be in that movie? That's all I'm saying. They don't want me. I'm, I'm next. I'm um, next. But I'm, I will say this. Now, <laughs> I'm not me. as good as Wonder Woman is. I am so excited for Wonder Woman 2. I am not excited for Justice League movie. No. I'm convinced it will be a mess, much like Batman vs. Superman was a mess. Like, I, 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 I still have no confidence in DC. Yeah. I have confidence in Wonder Woman. You have confidence in me. Mm-hmm. This has actually been a really good year so far for superhero movies. Because yeah. I thought Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was a lot of fun. And I thought Logan was... was yeah. Oh, wait, ridiculously wait for good Panther. Too. Wait for Panther. That's know, next year. Amazing. That's next year. But yeah, that looks it's great. That trailer. That trailer. Just, I watched it like three times in a row. I was like, oh, and this is amazing. Yeah. The other thing I love, and you know what, but this is an example of how Marvel is doing things smarter than DC. Uh, Black Panther played such a big role in Civil War. Mm. And look, I'm not going to lie. I knew the character existed. I don't know anything about Black Panther. Mm-hmm. But it was such a great introduction seeing him in that movie that I walked out of that like, I can't wait for the Black Panther. But that's exactly what what you're saying is that Marvel had built up all this goodwill Mm -hmm. that they can go and do these things now where DC was trying to have their cake and eat it too. They had barely laid the groundwork for this extended universe they're working on. The Wonder Woman was the best part of Batman versus Superman, and she's not in it very much, but it made you excited to see this. You know, Marvel can just shoehorn in because it's already the third Captain America sequel yeah. where they can, and they also introduced the new Spider Man in there too. They just seamlessly integrated him into the movie, which got you excited. You know, so Marvel's running a much longer game than DC is. DC they don't, they don't was have, playing catch up. Exactly. And they've never quite done. Wonder Woman's to me their first win. And I think they're probably terrified <laughs> that Justice League is going to be a step back from. And now they got Joss Whedon coming in, who's great, yeah. trying to trying to fix Justice League wow. here. But well, Snyder had to walk away. And Snyder had to walk away. But let's be honest, yeah. Whedon's trying to fix Justice League here. Um, the other last caveat to this is that Joss Whedon had a, ver- a draft of the Wonder Woman script, and that has come out, and apparently it's not so good. And it's yeah. I will defend Joss Whedon here, though, because I know he took a lot of heat on Twitter yeah. uh, uh, from a lot of women who loved Wonder Woman, saying that his version was was like too either male driven or sexist, or it doesn't it didn't quite capture the character. But I will I'll bring up a point that you brought up, Maria. What's that? He wrote that script ten years ago, and mm-hmm. you were saying it was a different time ten years ago. Yeah. This movie wouldn't have been as big a hit, or it would have been a different cultural hit than it is now. Right. And I think it's unfair to hold an unprodu- hold him responsible for an unproduced mm-hmm. script from ten years ago. Of course, uh, people so, grow. So yeah. you know, as uh, yeah, people grow, and we also don't know what you know. I've been given some really stupid notes, <laughs> as I think you know from. From studios and stuff or production companies. So let's cut Joss Whedon some slack here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joss Whedon is not the enemy here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, okay, I am really good at suspending my disbelief. That's probably why I, I'm into superhero movies. I'm into all this. I can I can get behind. You create like a a world, and I could throw myself into it. I'm not one of those people like I can't get behind that like talking. Mm-hmm. Rat, so why you, you look know? blue is the warmest color. Yeah, exactly. I think, but, you know. Um, so, but there is one world I can't get right my head around. I can't, it bothers me, I can't deal with it, and it is the world of the cars, the car movies. Oh my God, what planet are you living on? I just wanted to say it. <laughs> I, I, I can't, I oh, see I, those, or I saw the first one, and all I was like, how do these cars, where did these cars come from? Where did the people go? And I never <laughs> worry about things like that. Like like in Ratatouille, or I'm not oh. worrying about like how the rats talk or things like that. I don't know. Maybe it's because cars are such a different thing in our lives and it's just hard to put it in that place. I don't know. Why do the cars have doors if there are no people? <laughs> Who's building these cars? Why are some cars... Like that is hilarious. Like cows. I never, I never and, thought about it. I was so into it, man. Yeah. See, I'm so, I can't get. And so I'm was so the equivalent so... of the fact that they're racing. Is that like foot racing for us? Like, is this chariots of fire? I uh, I never thought about all of that. That's really interesting. You should bring and that up. Normally, like I... I just go with it. I can't go with now, it. Now, have you gone on the internet deep dives where they like really take all this illogical conclusion? So there's also Disney did a straight to video planes, mm-hmm. which takes place in the Cars universe, and there in that movie, there's a general 
who talks about fighting in the Battle of the Bulge. So if there was a Battle of the Bulge, <laughs> that means it was a Cars World War II. That means it was Car Cars Hitler. Hitler. It was Car Hitler and Car Holocaust and Car, you know, Kirishima and Nagasaki. <laughs> oh, and they say, so were the bombs that were okay. dropped, were those suicide missions? Were yeah, those, they don't you know, want to go all those places. But yeah. I, I, it's interesting you should bring that up because yeah. I am a cartoon addict. Yeah. So you just give me a cartoon. So okay. I guess there is a culture of us, a collection well, of us who are okay with that. That's really are, interesting. Those movies are huge hits. And you, I love all the Pixar movies, but I oh, can't God, yeah. get into these car movies. And Cars 3 came out. <laughs> it was, it, it was one. number one at the box office, but I could not bring myself to But it didn't open yeah. nearly as big as the other two. Also, there's a car pope that drives in a pope mobile, which oh, means there's cars <laughs> Catholicism, which means there are cars inquisitions. Um, and qu- cars wars of religion. So it got me... <laughs> It got me thinking. I want to see Cars Silence. You can have all this stuff. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. There's a car Scorsese then directing Cars, son. Yes. So, Sean, the Cars for me is a big thing that I cannot suspend my disbelief for. Is there, like, mm. is there a, a thing in pop culture you just cannot suspend your disbelief? <sighs> because no. usually I'm good at it. Mm. No, this is like an extreme example because once you're going, you know, one one good rule of story, like film storytelling I heard is that you get one cheat with the audience like you'll get one bullshit thing that you get them to buy into mm-hmm. to you know set up the conceit of the world but once you start laying on okay that you got to buy into you know, for example hunger games you buy into like post-apocalyptic world that they choose children from each district to fight each other to death like that's yeah. if you just kind of go with the premise you know harry potter there's a wizarding world mm-hmm. that lives you know um the thing that okay so harry potter here's one i'm gonna take a lot of fl- don't at me um I love the Harry Potter books, I love the movies, I love the world, but they just still somehow bothers me as much as she has thought out these books and this world. There's something about the early three books that feels like she's making it up as it goes along. There's a lot of Harry Potter (laughs) where it's like, oh, and there's conveniently this kind of magic, and there's this, and there's that, and I get that Harry is a child sort of discovering the world, but there's something super incongruous about like the economy and the world of Harry Potter that drives Mm. me nuts. You know what I liked about... The one thing I, I enjoyed about Fantastic Beasts, yeah. I liked what we got into wizard, like, bureaucracy. Oh, good, yeah. And I'll tell you why. Because that grounded the Harry Potter world for me even more. Yeah. Um, because it's like, oh, yeah, because this has to function as, like, some form of government, too. Yeah. You know? I, I don't know. It's, it's interesting you should talk about I I never really got too much into Harry Potter and all of that. I was very aware. I got more into Lord of the Rings. A lot of the rings yeah. is great. Now, because it seems like it just kind of resonated with me more on the human spirit type thing. So I could I could dig those. But also you that's know? a completely different just like, so, you know, you're yeah. not trying to connect the dots to anything you know. That's, that's no, the problem with cars think? is because they're trying to have their cake and eat it too, <laughs> you know? So Lord of the Rings, because... It's so fantastical. Yeah. It's easier to sp- suspend your disbelief yes. than Maybe Harry Potter, yeah. which does function within some sort of reality. Yeah, right, you gotta have to like re- dis- mm. you have to like disremember or forget. I guess you would say. <laughs> I like that word disremember. Everything you know about humanity and history, and have this whole wizarding world. And I think the you know the next five Fantastic Beast films are essentially going to be. We're gonna see World War II played out from the wizard world point of mm. view. So that's essentially what it is. Oh, then you're going to get Magic Holocaust. Yeah. Well, that's what that was. What do you think all that that nonsense was? Uh, Voldemort was basically Magic Vietnam. Maria, <laughs> is there is there something is there something that like whether it be a film franchise or a TV show or a book series that you know it might be good even, but it's just I you can't get past like there's something that you just can't get past. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm almost uh, ashamed and afraid to say which one, but it took me a minute. I had to really dig and do some researching on Hunger Games because I didn't understand yeah. that world. Okay, so it took you a little while it to wrap your head minute. around it. took me a minute, yeah, yeah. You know, um, Were you also reading the books on the set? <laughs> it's like color verbal. Three days before, yeah. 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 I, like cramming for a test. Literally, I did because I did not because I look more at biographies, autobiographies, okay. cartoons, and stuff like yeah. that. I don't, I never really got into that kind of world, so that was a challenge for me. But once I said, "Okay, this these are the rules," I was open to it. Okay, made it easier being in it in the story for me because had I just said and not been in the movie itself and had just watched it, I would have been like, huh. Yeah, so I enjoyed bit. those books. They Which, were good. Eh, I never and the read book, the third one. And to me, the books are always much more in detail, so you get you get a better grip. Yeah, and grasp on it. I think particularly the last book, which is the one I didn't read. The last <laughs> movie, mm-hmm. 
there's a, a, a the last book gives you a lot of detail that I feel that last film did it completed the, all the other stories um alright well <laughs> Sony is a studio we've talked a lot about on the show be it their mishandling of the Spider-Man franchise or when they didn't have the balls to release the movie the interview a move that I believe made them enemy of this podcast back in the day well this bullshit is their biggest fuck up yet. A new home entertainment initiative at Sony Pictures is offering clean versions of movies in the hopes to appeal to a wider audience. Basically, what they want to do is make the airline or broadcast TV version available for everyone to own. The reason they don't do that is because that version that you see on an airplane, it's not Actually, the real version of the real fucking movie. It's a it's a version that an art that artists work on that they didn't want out there. They wanted their version out there. They agreed to it just so it could be on an airplane. They don't agree to it that you could have it in your home. Uh, in fact, many artists want nothing to do with those versions, and a lot of them I've seen to even sometimes take their name off them. I remember sitting at home once, Scent of a Woman came on broadcast TV, and it said an Alan Smithy film, and I'm like, well, that's weird because Martin Bress directed this. Well, guess what? No, Alan Smithy directed that version because it stunk because Pacino couldn't say fucking it. <laughs> and here's the thing. They want to do this with movies like Step Brothers and Talladega Nights, What's the clean version of Step Brothers? They want to do this with all the Spider-Man film, a movie that's already PG-13, so how much more family-friendly do they want to make it? They want to do this with Captain Phillips and Crouching Tiger and Hidden Dragon. Why? So fucking eight-year-olds could enjoy Tom Hanks fighting some Molly pirates and read subtitles on an Ang Lee film? It makes no sense. These films were made by people who poured their heart and soul into them not to have the dicks and tits and fucks and shits taken out so toddlers could be in a room to watch them. And that's why you, Sony, or this week's Emily the Podcast, go fuck yourselves. These movies are done. Don't change them. That's my two cents. Okay. But hasn't there been a little developments on this recently? Well, I know the DGA was trying to get involved to stop yeah. this. Because the DGA said, look, we had original contracts set up with these directors, mm. and if you do all these things without directors being aware of it, then we are breaching our contract with them. You didn't have that meeting with us over here. And the filmmakers, I mean, Seth yeah. Rogen, yeah. Anna McKay, Judd Apatow, they're all furious about this. Yeah. It just seems stupid it, because why does Sony want to burn their bridge with all these filmmakers? Well, I, you know, they're, they're playing two ends if that's the case because, I mean, it's like you're, you're taking away to me creative freedom. Yeah. If you if you do something like that and, and, and dictate it for somebody else. Uh, bottom line to me is, you know that going out the gate, let them do their movie. Just do another movie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just, a, just a, you've got choices. Just do another movie. The, um, now, sometimes the filmmakers are involved with the airline dubs, though, because they like to have fun with it. Yeah, now sometimes. <laughs> they, and if, but the, but and they, if they would, get permission, but, but, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's the thing. Yeah. They're involved with because they understand, like, oh, this, this is part of the be game, or on, this is yeah. on an airplane, right. but not to be sold as yeah. their yeah. film. Like, there's a big difference between. Okay, we'll have some fun and we'll put this for something like, that's for specific limited distribution, as opposed mm -hmm. to like sitting on the shelves at Walmart. Right. Yeah. Um, my favorite is um, the motherfucking snakes, snakes oh, on a plane. The snakes on a plane. <laughs> the dub is I've had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane. You that's know. what that's what Samuel Jackson says instead and you, of. And if you see Samuel Jackson, <laughs> he's saying something like that. It just it ain't right. Yeah, um, it's ridiculous. My thing is like I've got a good girlfriend of mine told me years ago, and it just made all the sense in the world. You know, some of us we like to use the language, some of us don't. Some of us pretend we don't use it, and we use it all the time when we're not on this microphone. And so, like one of my girlfriends said, it's for colorization. <laughs> Some things just need yeah. that coloring. You got to yeah. use certain language yeah. to, to make yeah. it. Well, you know, uh, I, I, I referenced in our superhero talk the movie Logan, which yeah. was the first 
time they made Wolverine Mm R-rated. And the fact that, yeah, he did curse and he was more violent, it added something to the the weariness of that character and everything that character had been through. One of my favorite airplane doves is uh, from The Rock, where he goes, you're best. Losers complain about the best. Winners go home and date the prom queen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, isn't Die Hard? He goes yippee ki hey. Mr. Falcon. Yeah, who's Mr. Falcon? Doesn't matter. Um, I think uh, uh, arguably a more iconic line. So <laughs> when I was a kid, I would tape a bunch of movies, even if they were on network TV. Yeah. Just to have the tapes, and I had all these old. Or I'd have to fast forward the commercials, and I remember I had taped like the lethal weapon movies <laughs> off of off of like just ABC yeah. or whatever. So, you know, there were no curse and stuff. And for years I would watch Lethal Weapon. This was how I just watched it. Yeah. And Danny <laughs> Glover would always say like go spit in it. And yeah. I always assumed that it was being that he was saying something else yeah. instead of spit. <laughs> but then I eventually bought the DVD of Lethal Weapon when I got older. And I popped it in, and yeah, no, he says go spit a lot in that movie. <laughs> so. one, of, one of life's many mysteries. All right, well. Oh, my gosh. Uh, before yes. we go, we always like to end on a weird note, unless we're going to add on a sad note. Okay, I'd rather go weird. Well, we're going to go sad. Aww. And this, again, we were off a couple weeks, so this is a couple weeks old now by the time this is up. But. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention we lost our first Batman. Oh, yeah. Adam West died. Yeah. Uh, were you a fan of the old Batman TV Let show? Let me be the one to tell you. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I thought he was quite handsome. Oh, there you go. He was easy on the on young eyes. <laughs> on the young eyes. I would, I yeah. would watch. I remember, oh, like, I, like, <laughs> I remember as a kid I'd be watching the reruns yeah. of that. All the time. I watched the so neighbor's house, and we would just. And what's funny is that I didn't realize that he was being. It, it, as a kid, you don't realize that he's being comedic, or that he and that mm. that there's comedy to it. I knew it was kind of ridiculous and silly, mm. but I still, as a child, you took it like, oh, yeah, you, you know, Mister right, right, Freeze right. is not messing around. Egghead is right. here to. Is, Egghead. <laughs> Vincent Price played it. Yes, you know the Joker. You know, and I remember loving that that the the there's the the Batman movie they made. It's like one villain maybe. Two, perhaps three, but four supervillains? Uh, that show is so much fun. But you know what? They did a better job of balancing that out than, <laughs> say, Sony did with Spider Man 3. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they did, the new Beverly last month played the old, the Batman movie, the yeah. Batman TV movie oh, where wow. he fights the Joker yeah. and the Penguin and Catwoman and, and the uh, off brand Catwoman. And, and Riddler. No, it, wasn't it was Lee Merriweather. Was in the Lee? movie, but it was she wasn't the one Julie Newmar Julie played. Julie yeah. Newmar and the Eartha Kid also played. Right. There were three played, yeah. cat women. Yeah. Oh yeah. wait, so Lee Mer- Merriweather, Merriweather was, was in the, the movie. movie. Yeah. Maybe I've always confused Lee Merriweather with Julie Newmar. They, look, they they were favoring. I mean, they did have the cat suit on. Yeah, so it's kind of hard. So to, it's kind of yeah. hard to tell. Okay. Yeah. But, but what they, the craziest part was growing up watching it. I thought it was like live TV. I didn't realize it was in syndication already. Oh, that that was oh. like. <laughs> I was like, oh, so, my God. I, um, <laughs> you know, they played it at the New Beverly. They played the, the yeah. movie. And I bet you they bring it back. And I might go check it yeah. out again because it's been years since I've seen it. And it's a lot of fun. Well, so his reputation after the show, he just couldn't get a job in Hollywood. He scraped by for years. He moved mm. back to Idaho where he's from. And then he kind of had a resurgence of popularity with Family Guy with uh, Seth, um, uh, McFarlane Seth McFarlane casting him as the mayor. And that brought him back into... You know, and then Batman became hip again, and then well, you know, everything the people, old became new again. The people who gave him like the second job were like the fans. The fans. Well, Conan O'Brien put him in a pilot right. that a, a very funny pilot called Look Well that never became really. But it's anything. on the internet. It's been floating yeah. around since he died. But like Conan was a fan of it. Seth MacFarlane was a fan of it. So they brought him back. It's kind of, you know, and but, that's... Yeah, and then Ralph Garman from the Kevin and Bean show was a huge driving force who grew up as a massive Batman fan. Mm. Um, was a huge driving force in getting Adam West his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. It took mm. them like five years to get it done. Wow. And um, when he died, City of LA, Mayor Garcetti and, and police, commi- police Chief Charlie Beck, they had, a me- they had a memorial for him at downtown LA at City Hall. Over 10,000 people showed up. Wow. And they lit up a bat signal on the side of da- of, uh, of City Hall, oh, and cool. it was just. This, and Ralph Garman spoke at the event, and it was a whole, you know. So they were shocked at how many people turned out, you know, in full costume to commemorate people Adam love West. Love Adam West, and he is our first Batman that we lost. Someone tweeted, 
uh, I'm gonna I'll yeah. paraphrase tweet, but it was that uh, all the all the Batman should show up to Adam West's funeral, just like all like ex presidents show up. <laughs> to, like when a president dies. See that tweet I think would have been better served when the when um, Roger Moore died that all James Bond should show up at his oh, funeral wow. I think all James Bond should show up James Bond and I do think all Batman do you really want Val sh- Kilmer as a pallbearer yes I think <laughs> Kilmer and Clooney and Clooney Affleck just and twins. Bale I forgot and, Clooney was one yeah exactly and oh uh, Michael Keaton they should all be there wow for his are we missing any bat men no no that's it okay I forgot about there wasn't some like uh you know, they stereograph might have been some cereal. Weird off brand <laughs> yeah. Batman. Just like I'm sure the forties. Yeah. But you know what? Adam West, as far as I'm concerned, was our first Batman. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. arguably the greatest. He had the voice. Yeah. And even when he did commercials sometimes, you know, because he did a few commercials. Was was one of them one of those Geico commercials or something? Yeah. 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 So when he'd gotten yeah. sick, he was very healthy, and then he got leukemia and it like in three weeks it just, you know, it was eighty eight years old. Wow. So uh, well, Adam West, you will be missed. Rest in peace. And on that note, Maria. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. you, guys. I, I spent most of my time trying to keep from laughing. Well, that's good. Really Same. loud into the microphone. Because that's, you guys are hilarious to me. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank you so honor. much for coming out. Thank this you. hot valley day. <laughs> um, one more time, tell the people where they can find you. MariaHowell.com. That's M A R I A. H O W E L L dot com. And you're on Twitter as well? I'm on Twitter. If you go to my website, you can find all those links, though. But you just go um, Maria Sings Acts. That makes sense? That was, um, my handle is the same on Twitter. It's your uh, Insta and, and it's Facebook. It's your name and what you do. Maria Sings Acts. Yeah. Sean. You can follow me at all forms of social media at the Sean David. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram because I put pretty things up there. Do you? Post pictures of onion rings on it. I do not. I am not quite that uh, that that important. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at the Real Will Link. Um, I am back hosting my Orphan Black recap show. You ever watch Orphan Black? No, not yet. Uh, it's I'll going it right into its final Woman. season. <laughs> but uh, Orphan Black, starring Tatiana Maslany, she is the best performer on all of television well she won the emmy last year she did watch that show and i do a recap show you can find it on my youtube page i don't know how you find that um oh, good yeah you, <laughs> google you don't worry just follow will he'll yeah. post about it yes, yeah exactly. um on the show next week uh on our uh, andre Cer- Cervantes. i've never said his name out cervantes loud. cervantes like the writer come on <laughs> andre cervantes <laughs> Uh, he hosts the Dre's Geek Philosophy Podcast. We are going to talk to him about geek philosophy. And the week after that, we have a writer, Nicholas Tannock. Mm. I think I'm saying it right. I, I butcher everyone's name. You have, like, an easy name to say. So that's I appreciate I'm so that. Glad. Thanks. Um, and Nicholas... I'm glad. Nicholas... I can bring you an easy name. <laughs> and Nicholas uh, has written uh, books called uh, Your Kinky Friends and The Coolest Way to Kill Yourself. So we're going to find out what all those are about. Okay. I have some ideas. I, I don't think it's a how-to book. <laughs> well, if it was, then, uh, you know, if he's still alive, he's... Then he blew it. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, Maria. Maria, thank, thank you, you so much. And welcome back to the Little Sean Podcast. I'm Sean David. I'm Will Link. We're finished. We're finished. We're finished.